Alright guys, how are you and how's it going? I have um, I've taken a quick peek at the next one which is the Toskabot can fly. Basically you drag this little blue thing over here and that's that's all good. Why does it say 1 minute 50? Good job. Let me refresh. Huh. Doesn't seem to count either. Let's get rid of that. Okay, paste that in there. Seconds. Okay. So, if you've been watching this playlist for any length of time, you'll realize that all of this stuff has been done. Obstacles Easy has been done. I've also changed the resolution a little bit. Um, I was given some feedback that the resolution needs to be lower so things are easier to see. But I actually found it a little bit difficult to work with Tosca on a, on a kind of small screen. So I've kind of set it back to the the, the tighter resolution, the higher resolution. Uh, please give me some feedback if you think that's not appropriate. So I've created this, uh, this one here, Tosca Bot Can Fly, which is basically just a copy of... Um, the previous one, 72954, 72954, two times. Now, I was just thinking to myself, in the real world, URLs change all the time. It's possible the obstacle ID won't change because it's like a five digit number. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into test configuration and I'm going to go right click on that and go test configuration parameter and we're going to call it obstacle and in there we're going to take that number and we're going to put it in there okay and when we go in here now we're gonna be nice that was a little bit wider maybe I want to take that out and I want to replace it with a configuration parameter and I think the uh, bu -bu -bu, uh, configuration I thought it was open bracket CP something like that and we call it obstacle. No? Um, let's see if that even works. I thought it was CP for configuration parameter. Yeah, and it turns out it was CP for configuration parameter. Okay. Um, let me close all those windows. One more time. Run it. It does actually work, yeah. Okay, so would you mind telling me why when I typed in CP in here, nothing actually happened? I typed in C, P, CP. Didn't recognize it. Yeah, that's pretty poor. So now at least... Um, we could also change the URL. Um, why not do that, actually? Um, we call it obstacle course URL. OBSTH course URL. We paste that in there. Okay. And then in here. In there, obstacle, obstacle course URL. Wouldn't that be nice if that worked? Close that. And the higher level, let's put in a. 
on the higher level folder, the reason why it's opening it in Chrome is because I haven't set a configuration parameter here. Um, so it's a browser. Can anybody remember? Internet Explorer, no spaces. So let's go back here. That's the browser, that's the obstacle, and that's the obstacle course path. We're going to build up the URL using obstacle course path and the obstacle. Let's run it. There we have a new IE window, and there it is. Okay, I like that. Now, let me see. Process. Do we have any? Have I done anything here? Two times. That was the. That was the uh, the two times one. Let's do the, let's do that. Copy and paste that. Create a module. Task does not can fly. Let's go into our test case again and actually open it. So we have something to scan. Okay, task is not can fly. Feels like with me when I have a cold, head cold, or the cat has been all over me because I'm allergic to cats. There we go. Click on that. Scan it. Again, select on screen. It is my go-to tool of choice. Looks like the resolution is our zoom. We set the normal. So we got a from and we got a two. We got the snot bot. Uh, so I would I would scan the from, snot bot, and the two because that's where it's going. Gives you a little hint here. I'm gonna use drag and drop, right? Drag the image from the left to the right to complete this. Let's uncheck all of that. Okay, from two, or sorry, the ro the robot and two. I'm looking over here and to see advanced thing to see if anything isn't working. Let's just see if everything was recognized. Hey, that's cool, huh? Everything is a okay. Click on close. Save it. So now we can take what we have here and put it into our process folder. Now you might say, well, let's get rid of it two times. I want the task about to apply is up there. And there's the verify. Yeah, okay. So we're going to do a from here to here. Uh, so it's not action mode. Um, it's drag, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I remember having to give a 30 minute meeting a little kind of presentation on how drag and drop works to a bunch of Tosca automators um, myself and another Tosca consultant where uh, we, couldn't we couldn't contain our laughter drag and uh, drop okay so the idea is this thing here we drag it and then we drop it. Now you see the way one is a s input and one is a select? I'm not sure if that's gonna work, but I can't remember. Uh, let's give it a go. Uh, right, see the way it's just like flickering? That means the drag has worked, but the drop hasn't worked. Okay, that's all right. Don't panic yet. Let's go back to our Tosca. All right, hang on. This little application. There we go. Let's see the error message just for giggles, right? Container two was not found. Oh. Well, maybe that's because we wanted to select it, and maybe if we did an input, that might make a little bit more sense. Boom. Boom. I like the way it does a little curtsy. Let me try that again. 
Oh, that's cool. All right. So the magic of automation, right? We've got all this stuff done already. We've got the the pre, the process, the pre, the process, and the post. The pre is where we open it up, and we use a configuration parameter for the obstacle course URL and the actual obstacle. Um, I don't like that, so I'm going to change that to ID. Okay, we go back here. Obstacle course ID <laughs> makes more sense, right? So that's the pre, opens with the browser. Process is um, drag and drop the uh, robot, the Tosca robot. And then we verify that it worked. And we close the browser. Let's just close the browser now, run that. They should disappear. And that disappeared, great. Let's run it from the top, guys. I hope you're starting to see the power of automation. And we're verifying that this thing is actually working, which is really great. Now, if we look at all of these tests and then these two tests here, yeah, you might be able to say, well, you know, um, that would take me maybe 30 seconds to a minute just to go in there, run it, and make sure everything's okay. But with automation, you can run all of these in seconds. It, it really is great. Anyway, please subscribe. Um, I need to feed. I need to feed my family. And uh, <laughs> sorry about that. And uh, yeah, a few comments, a bit, a like or a comment shows audience engagement. And it tells me that there's people out there who actually appreciate what I'm doing. All right, guys and girls, again, bye. Bye-bye.